In this video, I want to talk about solving log and exponential equations. We're going to do some harder log and exponential equations in this round. In general, we use the composition properties or inverse properties to undo the log and exponential parts in an equation. We have pairs of logs and exponentials that go together as inverses. For example, log of something is the inverse of 10 to the something and natural log of something is the inverse of e to the something, and log base b of something is the inverse of b to the something. These properties allow us to simplify compositions of a function with its inverse. These inverse pairs can form a composition that lets us simplify an exponential and a log when put together. The most important thing when you do these simplifications is that the base of the exponential matches the base of the logarithm. For example, we can simplify log of 10 to the x to be x, and we can simplify 10 raised to the log x to be x because the base of log is base 10, so those match. We can also simplify natural log of e to the x to be x and e to the ln x to be x because natural log is actually a log base e, and that matches the base on e to the x. Finally, log base b of b to the x is also simplifying to be x, as well as b raised to the log base b of x. There's one other formula that we can use to help us evaluate a logarithm with a base that's not base 10 or base e, and that is the change of base formula for alternate bases. It says that log base b of x is equal to log x over log b or natural log x over natural log b doesn't matter which one you use, they come out to be the same number. As we dive into solving more complicated equations, there is one thing you need to remember as you're doing the solving. You must isolate the exponential or the log part completely before you apply the inverse. This means you need to undo any addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division on that part of the equation. So as we look at these problems, I want you to think about what you need to do to isolate the exponential or logarithm at the beginning of each. Let's get started. We're going to solve 1200 e to the 0.045t equals 3000. And we want to start by isolating the e to the 0.045t. That's the exponential part. How are we going to isolate that? Well, we can divide both sides by 1200 because right now 1200 is multiplied by that e term. So let's just write 1200 e to the 0.045t over 1200 equals 3000 over 1200. The 1200s will reduce to make a 1 and we're left with e to the 0.045t equals 2.5. Now we have the exponential part isolated, and that was the goal, the first goal, isolate it. Next we want to apply the inverse, and it's a base e, so the inverse is going to be natural log. On both sides we're going to take a natural log, ln, so we'll write ln of on the left and ln of on the right. And whenever I say of, I'm writing a set of parentheses. So I actually have ln, left paren, a bunch of space, right paren, on the left and the right. I'm going to insert the equation from the previous line into the argument of both logarithms. So now I have ln of e to the 0.045t and ln of 2.5, and these are set equal to each other. Well, on the left hand side, I have a natural log and an e, and those are matching bases. So what remains is 0.045t. And on the right hand side, I have natural log of 2.5. The final step here would be to divide by 0.05 on both sides. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll divide 0.045t by 0.45 and divide natural log of 2.5 by 0.045. So now I have t equals the natural log of 2.5 divided by 0.045. And simplifying that and evaluating that, we would get 20.362 rounded to three decimal places. Let's move over to the right and solve 7.5 equals negative log h next. 
Again, we want to isolate the exponential or log part before we do anything else. And the log part here is log of h, and this is a capital H. You might recognize this from a pH formula. The negative is not part of the log. It's in front of the logarithm. So we do need to move that before we apply the inverse of log. So let's just divide both sides by negative 1. 7.5 divided by negative 1 equals negative log capital H divided by negative 1, giving us negative 7.5 equals log of capital H. And now I do in fact have log H isolated. Log H is a base 10 logarithm, so I'm going to use exponentiation from a base 10 to take the inverse on both sides. So I'm going to do 10 to the something on the left and 10 to the something on the right. What goes in that set of parentheses, that something, is negative 7.5 on the left, giving us 10 to the negative 7.5. And on the right, that'll be 10 to the log capital H on the right-hand side. This right-hand side has a base of 10 for the exponential and a base of 10 for the logarithm. So this simplifies to be just capital H. On the left-hand side, we can evaluate 10 to the negative 7.5 which gives us 3.162 times 10 to the negative eighth. All right, moving on, let's solve 2 raised to the t over 12 power equals 50. Now, in this case, the exponential part is this 2 to the t over 12 power, and it is already isolated. So what we need to do is take a log on both sides with a base of 2 so that it matches the base of the exponential. Here we go. I'm going to take a log base 2 of, and then I'm going to put a set of parentheses on the left side. I'm going to take a log base 2 of and a set of parentheses on the right side. Inside those parentheses on the left side, I'm putting 2 to the t over 12. And inside those parentheses on the right side, I'm putting 50. So now it reads log base 2 of 2 to the t over 12 equals log base 2 of 50. On the left, the base 2 of the logarithm and the base 2 of the exponential are inverses, so we are left with t over 12. And on the right, we still have log base 2 of 50. Finally, we can solve for t by multiplying both sides by 12. So I'm going to write 12 times t over 12 equals 12 times log base 2 of 50, leaving us with t equals 12 times log base 2 of 50. Now we can evaluate log base 2 of 50 using Desmos. Remember you can do that base 2 by either choosing log base b off the function menu or by using an underscore on the keyboard. If you're using a calculator that doesn't have a base 2, remember that you can rewrite this using a change of base. So you could rewrite this as something like 12 times log 50 over log 2. And that way you can do this without any fancy buttons, just your standard log button on a calculator. The result when you evaluate this, and I encourage you to always make sure that you get the same number I do when you do the evaluation, it's just as important to practice with the evaluation part. Anyways, I get 67.7623. Or since we've rounded everything else to three decimal places, how about we just say 0 0.762. Finally, we're going to solve 10 to the x, and then outside the exponent, plus 2 equals 500. The exponential part is the 10 to the x. The plus 2 is outside of that. So the first thing we want to do is subtract 2 on both sides. So I'll write 10 to the x, and then outside of that, plus 2, and then minus 2 equals 500 minus 2. So that minus 2 is happening on both sides. On the left side, I now have 10 to the x, because plus 2 minus 2 makes 0. And on the right side, I have 498. Now I have the exponential part isolated, and now I can apply the inverse, which is a log, just a regular old log. That's the base 10 one. So now I will have log of, and I'll put a set of parentheses on the left, and I'll have log of, and I'll put a set of parentheses on the right. Now into that set of parentheses on the left, I'm going to write 10 to the x, 
and on the right, I'm going to write 498. So it now reads log of 10 to the x equals log of 498. On the left, I have a log base 10 and a 10 to the x. Those are inverses, so that is now just x. Log of 498 is something that I can evaluate with a calculator. And when I do that, I'm going to get out 2.6972. Again, three decimal places, we'll say that's 2.697. Now, do remember that you can check any of these problems two ways. You can plug your answer into the original equation and make sure it actually works or you could graph the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation in Desmos and check the intersection point. Let's make sure you remember how to do that for the problems we just did. I'm gonna pick two of them and let's go ahead and check our answers. Let's start with this last problem, 10 to the x plus two equals 500. We solved that and got the result, x is approximately 2.697. To check it, we'd go back to the original equation and plug in 2.697 for x. So that would be 10 to the 2.697 and then outside of the exponent plus 2 equals 500. Now when I calculate 10 to the 2.697, I'm getting 497.74. Then plus 2 equals 500. When I add 497.74 plus 2, I get 499.74, and that's approximately 500. It's not perfect, and it probably won't be perfect, because with exponentials, you get a large margin of error whenever you start to round. But if we were a little bit nervous about this, we could check it another way, remember? We can also graph both sides of the equation. So this was actually check number one, and let's also do a check number two, which would be to say we need to graph y equals 10 to the x, and then outside of that plus two, and we need to graph y equals 500, and see where the intersection point is. And the x value of that intersection point should match 2.697. Let's give that a try. All right, I've got both sides of the equation graphed, and I am now zooming out a little bit so I can see y equals 100 on my set of axes. I have an exponential function, 10 to the x plus 2, and I have a horizontal line, which is y equals 500. And the intersection point for these two is the point 2.697 comma 500. And that x value does match what we have found for a solution. So we found the point. 2.697 comma 500 for the intersection point, and that gives us a check. So just remember, you can check any answer you get when solving an equation one of those two ways.